the Health Professions Council of South Africa found well-known cardiologist Dr. Votabasan guilty of breaching medical ethics. This is for the activities that happened while he headed up the apartheid government's chemical and biological warfare program during the 1980s. Prior to this, shocking testimony emerged during the Truth and Reconciliation Commission about how the program was responsible for, among others, large-scale production of mandrax, cocaine and tear gas and providing disorientating substances for cross-border kidnappings. Some argue that his involvement resulted in many deaths, but Besson denied any wrongdoing and never applied for amnesty. In 2002, he was acquitted of all criminal charges against him before the High Court in Pretoria. Dr. Vota Besson, he earned the nickname Dr. Death after testimony emerged during the Truth and Reconciliation Commission in a criminal trial about how he had headed a secret chemical and biological warfare program named Project Coast during the 1980s. Scientists who worked with Dr. Besson testified that the aim of the project was to develop undetectable and untraceable deadly poisons to attack and kill black struggle leaders and suppress the black population. So in my view, he, he was not a truthful witness and neither was he somebody who was willing to come forward and talk about what he did. And even when there were revelations about what he actually got up to, it was just not a sense of remorse. I got the feeling when I walked away from the hearing that here you were dealing with somebody who was absolutely amoral. A guilty verdict by the Health Professions Council against Besson was something of a blessing for those who'd felt he'd literally gotten away with murder. In December 2013, seven years after the hearing began, the council found Besson guilty of unethical and unprofessional conduct as a medical practitioner. Far cry from what he had originally faced in his criminal trial, but were still important charges like coordinating the large-scale production of tear gas and drugs like Mandrax, Ecstasy and the incapacitant BZ, as well as supplying cyanide capsules for distribution to special units to use to commit suicide if captured. Have any of you all heard of Vauter Bassan? What? Vauter Bassan. The drug or is it what? He was a doctor. He was a doctor people thought brought Mandrax onto the street in South Africa. We are not following the history of drugs. We are just smoking. I learned the unique history of the South African Quaalude is inextricably linked to a secret government program codenamed Project Coast. Bassan claims to have weaponized street drugs like MDMA, LSD, and most prominently, Mandrax. He planned to use these drugs for crowd control purposes in the event of an anti-apartheid uprising. The methacolone was one of the substances that was manufactured with the intention of crowd control. Now, if you think about it, how can you control an unruly crowd with methacolone? You cannot fly over them and disseminate the methacolone over the crowd. But possibly you can start by getting the crowd hooked on methacolone. And if they are hooked on methacolone, that very same crowd will become a more docile crowd. This is a mandrax. Yes. Yeah. When you smoke mandrax, you use this thing, uh, this pipe. We call it a pipe. Right. Yeah. You see what happens when you, when, when you smoke? You, your body gets weak. It just pass out. When methacolone is taken orally, the user experiences muscle relaxation and a sense of calm disinhibition. But when the drug is smoked, its rapid onset and increased potency produce a rushing euphoria and in high doses, total loss of consciousness. How do you feel right now? I feel high over the moon. My problems are born. When you have smoke, things happen. You get dizzy, you feel tired, you even sleep right there, you can sleep standing. The other brief was, and very, very important one, was to develop a product to curtail the birthright of the black population in the country. Could you tell us a little bit more about this? Who asked you to develop this product? 
The person that directly instructed us or asked us to do this was Dr. Besson. The most frequent instruction we obtained from uh, Dr. Besson and Dr. Swanepoel was to develop something with which you could kill an individual which would make his death resemble a natural death and that something was to be not detectable in a normal forensic laboratory. There were also plans to contaminate medication used by President Nelson Mandela at Polismoor with an untraceable heavy metal poison thallium. Dr. Besson mentioned after he had told us a lot about the effects of thallium, if you give just the right dose, you mustn't give too much, but just the right amount, then you can cause what appears to be an outbreak of uh, meningitis or encephalitis. You get similar symptoms. And in so doing, he mentioned in passing that he had given some thallium. We said we had given some thallium to Steve Biko. One of the characteristics of the chemical and biological weapons program is in fact the amount of freedom that Dr. Besson had to decide what was done and how it was done. Plausible deniability was built into every aspect of this program. And I think that is one of the things that's made it so difficult to unravel the truth. There's been no single evidence, not a single bit of proof before this committee that I've done any of those things. As a matter of fact, we're talking about possibilities of things that happened. There's not even a, a fact, there's not a single fact that that did happen. No names, places, nothing. I did not act contrary to the laws of humanity at any stage. By 1983, the townships were burning. The ANC had embarked on a campaign to make the country ungovernable. The war was coming to the townships. So I then said, let us develop a type of gas that would calm people down, that, that would uh, take away aggression from, from people. And so Project Coast was born. Wouter Basson, a doctor and commandant in the Defence Force, was handpicked to develop a chemical and biological capacity for his apartheid masters. Guidelines were clear from the beginning. It should be products which are preferably not detectable and not traceable. We probably produced about 900 kilos of ecstasy for the army in pure crystalline form. Uh, we officially had an order of a ton of this material. Project Coast was a very large ranging project. It involved the creation of biochemical weapons. It involved the reduction or, or strategies to reduce the black population of South Africa, probably the most serious component, really. And chemicals, drugs, narcotics were deliberately synthesized by the apartheid regime in order to incapacitate people. The tragedy being that they were doctors and medical people. But then again, you must remember, apartheid really didn't have any scruples at all when it came to its survival. And there were things that went on in this country during that time that makes the Nazis, frankly, appear like a Sunday school picnic. The most scary part of our project was this genetic manipulation, manipulation of organisms. It is a very powerful tool. We transferred information from the DNA from one organism to another organism. They produce higher quantities of toxins and that the detection of those toxins would be retarded. You can infect water supplies and that will take them a bit longer than what is necessary to determine what the actual cause is. And you can blame me for that. I had maybe my part in it. That is true. And I'm sorry about it. But I was not guilty alone. Project Coast was born in the early 80s out of the total onslaught paranoia of former state president P.W. Buta. About a billion rand and staff of nearly 200 were allocated to Project Coast. The project carried on into the early 90s and was only disbanded shortly before F.W. de Klerk handed power to Nelson Mandela. I had nervous breakdowns on all of these issues and many things. We suffered from it, scientists, a lot, I can assure you, and I cannot make this good. But what grieves me 
is that the people that created this climate is now denying it. Like if you listen to a person like Minister Pak Bota, you would have sworn he was born an ANC member. He never said total onslaught, communism, that's the enemy. Never. He denies it. And this is what grieves me, Mr. Chairman, that they are ducking their responsibility for what they did. Because I have no doubt in my mind that those are the responsible people that created the climate. And they supplied the money, Mr. Chairman, to do this. I'm saying let's decriminalize the conflict of the past. Stop prosecuting people that we can move forward in this country, with, this, with, with our country. Because I say that is what this country needs. Basson is practicing as a cardiologist in Cape Town.